I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. <coughs> our first item for this evening is our agenda. Uh, Dr. Dance, are there any additions or changes to tonight's agenda? Uh, there are none. Hearing none, is there a motion to adopt the agenda? So moved. Second? Second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Thank you. Mr. Chairman? Yes. I have, a, um, I have a change as well to the agenda. Okay. Does that have to be? I'm always confused about when to do it. All right. All right. It'll be done before the adoption. Well, we've adopted the agenda now. I think uh, the time was before. Okay, but the last time I did it, and I, I tried to put it in right with Dr. Dance's, you said it had to be voted separately. So we voted on whether or not he had it, you know, with oh. his changes, and then we vote. But we, already, right. we adopted the agenda. We already went through the middle. Yeah, we've made a motion to adopt our agenda. Is that, uh, well, I'll, I'll let you, what motion would well, you like to make? And it was what we discussed earlier, is just to add in the um, committee report. Okay. Um, all right, is there a second to the motion? Second. All right. Uh, all, all in favor of adding an agenda item, please? Can I just understand what the conversation was about adding them? Yeah, it was just to allow committee reports because it's not on the agenda and it, that's typically a regular agenda item. Is that, a, is that at every meeting or was no, that we, just we a, hadn't planned to do it at every, every meeting. meeting. So, I mean, uh, and I don't know that our committee chairs are prepared to report this evening, I didn't know we were. but um, it would have to be, I mean, I'll allow for a vote. I mean, you've made the motion, it's been second. Uh, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed? Nay. Okay. Thank you. Our uh, agenda stays as is. To clarify what meeting. We ought to clarify at what meeting that is, if okay. that is an agenda I'll, item. I will do that. I will make sure. I, I thought we had said the first meeting. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, our next item is selection of speakers. <coughs> Sign up cards were available to the public prior to the meeting for anyone wishing to speak at this evening's meeting. Board practice limits the number of speakers at a regularly scheduled board meeting to 10. Each speaker is allotted three minutes to discuss his or her issue. The completed sign-up cards for this evening have been placed in the box to my right, and the first 10 drawn from the box will be our speakers for tonight during the public comment portion of the meeting. If fewer than 10 sign-up cards are received, all who sign up will be permitted to speak. Ilana Santos. Amarpreet Singh, number two. two. David Green, number three. Our fourth speaker is Ramaya Ravapulali. Rava I apologize. Our fifth speaker is Bosh Farone. Our sixth speaker is Subja Sofiana. Our seventh speaker is Junaid Malik. And our last speaker for the evening is Zubari, Zubair Malik. Thank you, Ms. Walia. All right, we'll go move into our public comment portion of the meeting. Uh, this is one of the opportunities we provide to hear views and receive the advice of our community members. The members of the board appreciate hearing from interested citizens and will take your comments into consideration, even though it is not our practice to take action at this time on issues which are raised. When appropriate, we will refer your concerns to the superintendent for follow-up by staff. While we encourage public input on policy programs and practices within the purview of this board and school system, this is not the proper avenue to address specific student or employee matters or to comment on matters that do not relate to public education in Baltimore County. 
We encourage everyone to utilize existing avenues for redress for complaints. I would like to remind the public the inappropriate personal remarks or other behavior that disrupts or interferes with the conduct of this meeting are out of order. I ask you to observe the timer, which will let you know when your time is up. Please conclude your remarks when you hear the bell or see that the time has expired. And we'll begin our public comment portion with uh, our advisory and stakeholder groups. And our first speaker tonight is Ms. Abby Baton, president of TABCO. Good evening, Chairman McDaniels, Vice, Cha oh, Vice Chairman Gillis is not here, <laughs> Dr. Dance and members of the board. With less than a month left of the school year, it is not only an incredibly busy time with graduations, end of year final exams, classrooms for the summer, but it is also a time to reflect on the year and think ahead to next year. While summertime is busy, it is not quite as frenetic as the school year. It allows us to take the time to think and plan for the future without the distractions that naturally occur when we are in the midst of the school year. As we look back over the year, we can assess with more clarity what worked, what didn't, what to save, what needs to go, and what will be our priorities. This reflection is important for any organization. TAPCO has begun to identify certain issues that we hope can be addressed over the summer. The most important issue is discipline. We hear from teachers and other school employees about this issue more than any other topic. We are working through faculty councils in many schools to understand and address the issue. We need to look at the issue systematically as well and systemically. What can we as a system put into place to make sure our students and staff are safe? Substitutes and the lack of adequate effective substitutes has also become a huge issue throughout the county. The new grading and reporting initiative is yet another issue that we are pleased will be piloted next school year. Of course, testing remains another big issue. It is an issue we hope with the changes to the Elementary and Secondary Education Act and the State Testing Commission will finally be proper. Finally, we will be working toward bringing community schools to BCPS. We want to take the time necessary with this project so we can not only have community schools in place, but have community schools done correctly and sustainably. We look forward to working collaboratively with BCPS on these and other important education subjects. One thing is for certain. The school system never has the summer off. We must use that time wisely to address those issues that we can't during the school year. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Baton. Our next speaker is uh, from our special, special Education Citizens Advisory Committee, P.J. Schaefer. Good evening. Good evening. <clears throat> Members of the board, Dr. Dance, Chairman McDaniels. Uh, I'm PJ Shea from the Vice Chair of the CCAC. I'm also the parent of an eighth grader with an IEP at Cockeysville Middle. Um, this, year, this year, the last two meetings of the CCAC, uh, we went on the road. We, we met at Woodlawn um, Library as well as North Point <coughs> Library to get out of Towson to give some of our um, members the ability to to have closer commutes or join us if they weren't able to to make it all the way to Towson. Um, those two meetings um, were were somewhat lightly attended, but we did at least give give the, you know the the community an opportunity to uh, to come see us in different locations. Another topic, and I'm going to bounce around a little bit tonight, and I forgive me for trying to keep up. Um, that we'd like to talk about is curriculum and instruction. Um, the, a lot of the kids with IEPs are behind in grade level, and they're not doing necessarily grade level work. <coughs> the curriculum and instruction office writes the curriculum, but doesn't have the benefit of um, members of the special ed office helping them to write that curriculum. So what happens is the curriculum then needs to be adapted in every special ed classroom, putting an unbelievable burden on our teachers to go ahead and adapt the curriculum to each particular child with an IEP um, to their particular grade level in place of academic learning. Um, what we'd like to see and the ask is that the Office of Special Ed 
um, be able to put staff on the curriculum writing committee um, so that the curriculum can better be scaffolded to help those students with IEPs um, access the regular curriculum. Next jump. Um, one of the things that you've heard from me over the years, and I've been involved with CCAC for years and years and years, um, has been at the ask for consistency at the top. In the six years or so that I've been working with the CCAC and, and coming to speak to you, we've had five different directors of special ed. Um, last year, Deborah Books had been elevated to the executive director's position. That position has remained vacant pretty much for this year. I think that students with IEPs really could benefit from having an, an advocate at the executive level. Um, and, and we'd also like to see some consistency so that, again, there's somebody in a position advocating for kids with IEPs on a regular basis and not just this turnover from year to year to year. Um, Last but not least, um, well, two things. One is there, uh, there's, I'll jump ahead. Item K4 is a contract that's gonna benefit um, special ed in the agenda tonight. It has to do with speech, OT, audiology, and other services. CCAC supports that um, member of the agenda. Last but not least, um, we've had some po very positive interaction with the um, Office of E-Learning and the Educational Options. They are providing some great work and doing some great things to allow students with IEPs and really all students to either speed up and get extra um, credits in a shorter period of time or where it really benefits many of our kids with IEPs is they have a full year, um, calendar year that is, not just the regular academic year, to complete a course. Giving some uh, that extra flexibility really benefits our students and I thank you and wish you all a good evening. Thank you, Mr. Schaefer. Thank you. Our next speaker in the public speaker portion of our meeting is Elena Santos. Um, good afternoon, Chairman McDaniels, Dr. Dance, and members of the board. My name is Eliana Santos, and I'm a senior at Western School of Technology and Environmental Science. It has come to the student body's attention that schools will not be closed on June 6, 2016 for our graduation. Therefore, all of our teachers will not be able to attend. Uh, today, I'm here to ask to rec reconsider this decision. We take pride in the teamwork that has led Western to become a national blue ribbon school. Uh, as well as the top school in the county. That being said, we must acknowledge that our teachers have played an instrumental role in our accomplishments. These same teachers are the ones that took the time to write countless letters of recommendations for our college applications and scholarships and even adjusted their schedules to hold after school co coach classes. Their unwavering support is just one reason as to why they deserve to watch the class of 2016 walk across the stage. Our teachers have become f family over the past four years, and the idea of graduating without them in the audience seems impossible. We feel so strongly about this issue that even with just a couple of days of high school left, the class of 2016 did what we know how to do best, which is work together to create a petition, which is undoubtedly gaining attention. Today, we have more than 250 signatures and ex expect to double that number by the end of the week. And so we ask the board to reconsider this decision. <coughs> Thank you very much. <coughs> Our next speaker is Aman Preet Singh. Singh. Can we please uh, take my name off the list? Oh, you, you're not going to speak? <laughs> no, we, got, we have a bunch of people speaking. Okay, that's fine. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Our next speaker is Mr. David Green.
Good evening. I'm here, I'm here to, to follow up on what Abby Baton said uh, that related to discipline. And uh, part of what you're dealing with, uh, savvy technologists and, and executives have known for a very long time that where you, when you're looking at a system, you optimize for the whole and not for the parts. And if you optimize for the parts, um, sometimes what you get is this. Edwards, this is a picture of Edward scissored hands. Mm. And he's optimized for uh, cutting ability, which lets him uh, trim hedges and so forth. But if he, if he wants to be a wide receiver or play the flute or, or, or hug somebody, it doesn't work so well. Um, and I, I was reminded of this. So this is the best example of, of how you think about optimizing. And I was reminded of this a couple of months ago when uh, the superintendent was talking about optimizing. And he was talking about optimizing the printing systems. And so I have a second picture, which you might call Edward Printer Hands. And so I wasn't surprised when uh, I started hearing grumbling from a lot of different places about how the new printer system is working. And uh, if you optimize like this, you, you uh, the, the whole suffers, and there can be lots of little things that go bad, and I think that's probably what's happening with the printer system. Now, this isn't the biggest problem in the world, um, but, but I think it relates to uh, Abby's problem, which was, uh, w which was um, discipline and so forth. And so here's another picture, and I have here the graduation rate. So if you're talking about the graduation rate, um, which we, we've, we have really seemed to be optimizing for. It seems we've, we've bragged about how much we've improved that. But any time you optimize a system, you want uh, parts of the system, like the graduation rate, you need to think about how that affects um, the other parts of the system. And my suggestion, I, I would suggest to you that the, the heavy emphasis on graduation rate has had a direct effect on standards for both behavior and academics. So if we want more graduation, what can we do? We can let people have, have more offensive behaviors as being acceptable, and we might lower the standards for, for graduating. So um, the message, again, is when you're optimizing, you've got to think about the whole. And any time you do that, you need to think about what is the impact of your changes, whether it's the printer system or the graduation rate, what is the impact of that gonna be on the whole system? Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Green. Our next speaker is Ramya Ravulapali. I apologize. I would like to remove my name from the list as well. Oh, that's no problem. So <laughs> Thank you. Our next speaker is Dr. Farron. Would you like to remove your name from the list, Dr. Farron? <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to to ask you for the minutes of the previous. <laughs> 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 um, good evening to all, and I will keep it brief. <laughs> you know, my name is Bashar Faron, and actually, um, when I first came to the U.S., my chairman told me that your name is Bash Faron, mm. so that's the American one. And I actually really like my American name, but nonetheless, talking about discipline and other things, I, I really truly believe that what made me stick with the school system is the general discrimination that I have endured and my sons endured. It comes from the name, it comes from opportunities and so forth. So as a foreigner, I really like my name to be pronounced well. And one of the positive things that I've really heard some of the universities do is they really practice the pronunciation of foreign names in a way that it really makes those students or graduates really feel proud of themselves and be happy. Um, and of course, you know, on the side, um, as I told you before, and I'm not really bragging, I have three boards 
And there are many physicians in my profession that are advanced far more than me. And I can't really find a reason except, you know, where I came from and my religion, my name. Uh, be as it may, when my kids went to Baltimore County Public Schools, they really had difficulties and oftentimes they come in, oftentimes not really speaking to us about what's the problem. We could tell that they have been harassed for uh, either a name or being an Arab origin or Muslim. And my focus today and each time I really talk to you is that my grandchildren, my new grandchild, would not really face the same. So I could do a whole lot of things in 12 years of coming to the board. Uh, I'm attached to you for that reason. And I am really hopeful that um, whenever really you come to decide about the holidays, equal is equal, equal is fair. Equal holidays, I ask you to close the schools on Eid al-Fatr and Eid al-Adha equal to Yom Kippur and Rosh Hashanah. And I really ask you also to practice the pronunciation of Eid al-Fatr. I know it's difficult, all right? But we are a diverse society. Uh, I do do that in my practice. When I have foreign people, I practice the name before I go to the, to the, to the door and introduce, introduce myself. So not to belabor the show, I lost my, my minutes. Um, but. This is the reason why I'm, I'm here, all right? I could go sailing, I could go and work more, but I, I really believe in equality and equity, and I'm really wishing that I be part of that in the school system. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Farron. Our next speaker is Sipka Sufayan. I'm here to show my support for Russian tech, and I would like to throw my name from the list. All right. Well, thank you for Apologize. coming. Good evening. Our next speaker is Janald Malik. Malik. Uh, good afternoon, Chairman McDaniel, um, Dr. Dance, and members of the board. My name is Junaid Malik, and like the speakers before me, I'm a graduating senior at Western Tech. I'm here today as a representative of the student body as a result of a decision by the county to make June 6, our graduation date, a normal school day. The unintended consequences of this decision for students, teachers, and BCPS as a whole are are largely negative. We hope that by presenting these to you, the board will reconsider this decision and, make, uh, and not make our graduation a normal school day for Western students and staff. One of the most important consequences of this policy is the effect it has on teachers. The requirements of going to school on graduation combined with the 10 a.m. timing of the actual ceremony prevents many of our teachers from attending. These are teachers who have taught us, who have coached us, and who have helped us throughout our high school career. To then stop them from attending graduation would go against the ideals and values of BCPS. In terms of equality, a value Dr. Dance has stressed many times, every high school in BCPS except Western Tech and Woodlawn will have their graduation in a time frame outside of the normal school day. To treat these schools differently, two of the most diverse in the county, would go against the value of equity that is supposed to guide BCPS policy. In terms of transparency, which has been a cornerstone of Blueprint 2.0, there have also been issues. For one, we were only notified of the change two weeks before the final day of school for seniors. Whether this was intentional or not, the perception it has created is that BCPS deliberately wanted to prevent complaints from students and parents. While I would like to believe that this is not the case, the damage has been done. If transparency and communication truly are values BCPS believes in, then we urge the board to listen to students and parents, over 250 of whom have signed a uh, petition against this requirement by re and so and in doing so reverse reverse this decision. In terms of creating a culture of deliberate excellence, this decision also has serious implications. Graduation represents the culmination of not only the hard work and dedication of students and parents, but that of teachers. Removing teachers from graduation will ignore their contribution to our success, a contribution that has made Western Tech the number one school in BCPS. 
Teachers are an integral part of education. Unfortunately, they are consistently overlooked in policy decisions. If BCPS wishes to reaffirm its commitment to teachers, then preventing them from going to graduation is not the way to do it. The one just um, at its core then, this issue is about preserving both the concept and the reality of a team BCPS. In recognizing that goal, we hope that this board will act in the best interests of students, parents, and teachers. Thank you. Thank you. Our last speaker for the evening is Zabar Malik. Good afternoon, Chair, Chairman McDaniel and Dr. Gantz and members of the board. Good afternoon. Um, well, as my brother was talking about, the one justification for keeping school open on graduation is that it will allow us to meet the number of hours required by law for students to be in school. However, with or without school, Western Tech is on track to meet and even exceed the number of hours required by June 17th. Moreover, last year, BCPS closed our school for graduation just days before the actual ceremony, and this sets a dangerous precedent for closing school on graduation, which is very important. Excuse me, very important to students and teachers as well as parents. And as my brother did not mention, for even the underclassmen like myself, I, I'll have to miss school on this day just to attend my brother's graduation. So it places an undue burden on the underclassmen who have siblings who go to their school to miss school and have this opportunity to either go to graduation or go to school and maintain perfect attendance. Furthermore, since all the, since some of the students will not be at graduation, I mean some of the teachers will not be at graduation, the county has provided us with uh, 30 or so substitutes who will be filling in. However, even if these substitutes do come and they fulfill their role, the loss of education that is provided to the students will still be, will still be taken into effect. Even if the students, even if the substitutes do their best, the quality of education that is delivered to the students will be subpar at best because the students will not continue on their standard learning path and they will not be prepared adequately for their final exams which are coming up in like a week. So as my brother and my fellow students at Western Tech have reaffirmed, uh, we would like to urge you all to reconsider your decision to sco close school on uh, June 6th, which to keep school open on June 6th. Thank you very much. Thank you. <coughs> Well, I certainly would like to thank all of our public speakers for this evening, but um, particularly I would like to thank the students from Western Technology for coming here and expressing their thoughts and opinions. And those of you who are undergrads, I hope you will encourage your classmates to come back and, and uh, speak to us because your voices are very important for us to hear. So thank you again. Uh, Mr. Collins. Mr. Chairman, <clears throat> I'm assuming that those young men and young ladies who spoke have all their information correct. And if they do, that Western Tech is going to meet the hours, uh, they certainly covered all the bases. And I heard all of the terms that we value, like pursuing deliberate excellence, like equity, like fairness, like getting ready for the examinations, and all of the kinds of things that they spoke about. So I would encourage our um, hours counters to take a look again. And if they are correct, I would hope that we will, in fact, heed their recommendation. The last thing we want to do as a system is to have a student body that cares so much about their faculty and feels so kindly towards them and obviously has worked so well together to create a blue ribbon school to have their last experience not quite as happy as they want it to be because they didn't have their teachers there. To have students say that to us is powerful. So if it's at all possible, and I think they're probably right because I think they probably can count, among other things, being graduates of BCPS and probably have the hours figured out. But I'd like to see us uh, address that. Um, and I know we don't usually comment or address specifically yet, and I'm not asking for a comment from anyone, but I really hope we can look closely at that uh, for, the, for these students. Thank you. Ms. Kazi, did you have a comment? Make a comment? Yes. I totally agree with what Senator Collins has said, and maybe <clears throat> some alternate plan of a, of a volunteer field trip for those students 
for whom they have a relative graduating and so forth, and maybe so that in some limited way, I mean, it would be nice if the whole school could take a field trip, but maybe there's not uh, space in the graduation facilities. But if there could be some arrangement for a volunteer field trip for those students uh, that felt most closely to the, to the graduating class, that maybe something like that could be worked out. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Um, our next uh, agenda item is uh, our superintendent's contract. Um, we got a follow up from uh, previous discussions. At this time, I would ask if um, I have a motion to approve the version of the superintendent's contract and authorize the board chair to execute the contract. So move. I have a second. Second. Is there any discussion at this time? Ms. Miller? I actually have, uh, I, I think I have adequately expressed um, my concerns regarding this over time, but I do have some um, points I would like to make, but I ask if I could do that after the vote. Um, yes. Okay. Ms. Causey. Board member comments. Hi. Um, so I just wanted to state uh, about this contract that I am going to be voting against it. And I just wanted to reiterate from the, the last meeting that this is not a personal issue. It's not a, a difference of opinion issue. Um, Dr. Dance and I have constructive conversations and meetings about the school system. We're both dedicated to, to working with the staff and the rest of the board for moving it forward. But I'm not going to vote for it, uh, as I had mentioned before, on principle. The percentage increase uh, of the um, compensation, including the salary and the deferred compensation, far exceeds any increase that teachers, bus drivers, and other support personnel have received um, over the years. And um, it just goes to the continuation of an increased expansion of the administrative budget. I'd also like to <coughs> say that the that uh, contracts uh, Employment contracts often are based on performance, and I would say that this compensation package of salary, deferred compensation, retirement, 50 days of vacation, sick and personal time, uh, the car and security and so forth, put this contract at the top value of all superintendents in Maryland. If not the top, it's very close, um, based on the information that we received. Uh, but BCPS is not yet the best in the state of Maryland. We have a ways to go, and we're working at it. And we're committed to working together towards that. But for instance, our facilities are not in the top of the state. With close to 30,000 students without air conditioning, we're actually down at the bottom of the state. Just two districts have a great percentage number of their students in that condition. Many are overcrowded and so forth. So that's just another reason that I don't believe this contract is appropriate. And also as to the process, um, there, in my opinion, was not enough time given to it, and there'll be um, other remarks that, that um, spell that out a little more clearly. But that's my position. Thank you. Thank you. Is there any other discussion at this time? If not, I would ask for a roll call vote, please. Okay. Ms. Causey? No. Mr. Collins? Yes. Ms. Eaton? Yes. Mr. Gilbertson? Ms. Johnson? Yes. Ms. Miller? No. Yes. Mr. Birch. Aye. Ms. Williams? Yes. Ms. Walia? Yes. Mr. McDaniel? Yes. All right. So the motion carries. Uh, thank you. Um, Ms. Miller, you had a comment at this time? Yes. Thank you, Mr. Okay, Chairman. The members um, I, I would like to read um, a statement, and I'm reading this on behalf of myself and my fellow board member, Kathleen Causey. It is a statement of objection to the process of considering the superintendent's employment contract. As members of the Board of Education of Baltimore County, we make the following objections to the process. Number one, the board voted on a non-existent contract on May 10th. The board leadership, Chuck McDaniels and Ed Gillis, pushed through a vote on May 10th on the superintendent's contract, even though the details had not been finalized by the board, nor a proposed draft created on which the board could vote. Although the board had until July 1st to produce a signed contract, we were asked to vote blind with only the salary and, and benefits package determined, but none of the remaining details. Number two, information requests had not been fully answered. 
Requests for information from board members, which had been solicited by the board chair, had not been fully answered, nor had the chair attempted to get answers beyond those volunteered by the superintendent. Number three, insufficient time allotted for deliberation. The board chair controlled the topics we were, we were permitted to discuss at the April 19th closed session meeting, limiting them to salary and benefits. At the May 10th closed session meeting, only 15 minutes was allotted, causing us to reconvene in closed session later and delaying the open session by almost an hour. <coughs> Members att attempting to have discussion regarding possible amendments were rushed until the vote was called prematurely without resolution of contract terms. Number four, the superintendent attempted to pressure board members during the process. Between the closed and open sessions, the superintendent threatened to refuse to attend the open session meeting on May 10th because the board had not decided upon all the contract details. The decision was made at that time by the board chairman to call the entire board together without reconvening a meeting to express to us the superintendent's dismay. The superintendent was convinced by another board member to acquiesce and attend the open session. Number five, insufficient legal guidance given to the board. Although requested by the board that the board be represented with specialized legal counsel through the process, that idea was rejected even though the superintendent had hired his own personal negotiator. When questioned on voting on an undrafted contract, the board's legal counsel, Andy Nussbaum, <coughs> offered no advisement, warning, or counsel regarding the wisdom of such a negotiating practice. Further, when the draft was created by Mr. Nussbaum after the May 10th vote, he took the liberty of picking and choosing what to include in the draft among the items discussed but not voted upon. Number six, the decision was made without regard to a pending ethics complaint. Despite an ethics complaint having been filed on May 6th against the superintendent, which raised many issues pertinent to the superintendent's employment contract details, the board failed to give time for a review of the complaint or even give sufficient consideration to the issues raised which could be addressed in the employment contract for present and future superintendents. Number seven. Poor negotiating tactics protected the superintendent's interest, not the board's. The board gave away all leverage up front by determining the salary and benefits first while failing to require decisions on any contract requirements on the superintendent before voting for approval 10 to 2 on May 10th. This precluded the ability to leverage salary or benefits against other requirements important to the board. Ms. Causey and I did all we could do to bring discussion and try to address issues on behalf of the interests of the board, school system, and citizens of the county in the contract approval process. But without the support of a majority of the board, our, vote, our motions are voted down. The best we can do most times is to shed light on the issues, decisions, and operations of the board. It is to this end that we offer this statement of objection. We ask that this statement be made part of the written public record for this meeting. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Collins. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I'd like to explain my, ye my yes vote. Um, going back to my legislative days, uh, after a vote is taken, the, the uh, members of the committee sometimes, or of the legislative body, sometimes explain their votes. Um, <clears throat> The perception that Mrs. that Mrs. Miller conveyed, and that uh, she uh, indicated was supported by Mrs. Causey, two our two newest board members, both of whom I have a lot of regard for because they do raise issues for discussion, and they work very very hard, uh, and they are well informed, but I think in this case uh, they uh, are just simply wrong. In the five and a half years that I've been privileged to be on the board, I don't think anyone in the audience or anyone in the viewing public of the small group of citizens that watch the board meetings regularly uh, look upon me as a get-along, go-along member 
or as a shrinking violet or as someone who will not speak up. The process was not perfect. We discussed the contract many times at many meetings in segmented short periods to be sure. But the reality is there was a great deal of discussion and it became abundantly clear as the process and the discussions moved along exactly where the sentiments of the board members were. That did not mean that we ignored or didn't give time for comment by all board members who chose to comment. The suggestion that that was done by the chair is not accurate. You've heard me say in public, if you want to consult with the previous three chairman, chairman or presidents, as they used to be called, I hollered at them frequently if they tried to shut me up because that's not something that we do and it's not something that we have done in this process either. Yes, it was a long time getting here, but we all had copies of the contract delivered to our houses five or six days ago. We knew exactly what was in the contract. We discussed this evening, which is why we were a little late starting and had only five minutes for, for a snack, not that chubby people like me need any minutes for a snack, but um, we discussed amendments proposed by some members and adopted, as a matter of fact, uh, uh, one change uh, and, a, and a technical amendment proposed by a member to the contract today. We all know what's there, and we had a philosophical discussion of micromanagement in contract language. We had a, a discussion just today of many other segments in the contract. And obviously by the vote, a significant majority of the board is comfortable with the contract. And, and um, I think it's the right thing to do. I think um, some of the items uh, that Mrs. Miller uh, enumerated, while I'm not questioning either her memory or her integrity or her judgment, I didn't see the things that way, the way she saw them. And that's okay because in a democracy, in a committee, on a board, you can all look at the same information and come to different conclusions. But I just didn't want uh, to not speak and leave the impression in the body politic or the folks here in the room that the board was feeling the way that was expressed by Mrs. Miller and speaking on behalf of herself and Mrs. Causey. I don't presume to speak for any other member of the board, but I just wanted to put the affirmative view out there. Um, yes, it was not a perfect process. It would have been much better, and I said this even tonight to Kathleen uh, sitting next to her at dinner, um, it would have been much better if we had taken a day or two and just had a, a meeting about the superintendent's contract. We're always rushed. We spend many hours here at our meetings, and um, we're, all, we're frequently rushed because there is just so much business that needs to be done. And, and uh, it's not a perfect system. But we're all volunteers and we all do the best we can. But I think that um, the process of, of, of um, establishing this contract was done uh, the best we could and we all know what's in it. And clearly, except for two of us, we agree with it. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, speaking of the business we have to uh, complete, we'll move to our next agenda item, which is uh, on our policies, and I'll turn that over to Ms. Williams at this time. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Mr. Chairman and members of the board, the board's uh, policy review committee is asking the board to accept the committee's recommendation to amend board policy 5230 that has been presented to you on tonight's board agenda as Exhibit G. The policy that is being brought forward for third reader includes the requirement that parents and guardians be notified annually of their rights to review their child's student records and the procedures for verifying system-wide deletion of their child's student data and records. The committee uh, supports this change, which is a part of the committee's report this evening. Thank you. Um, do I have a motion to adopt the recommendations of the board's policy review committee? So moved. Thank you. Uh, any discussion at this time? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, the motion carries. 
Thank Mr. You, Chairman, I, I have a related item uh, related to policy 5230. I move that the board directs the superintendent to update rule 6202 form A, parental privacy preferences, to allow parents to opt out of directory information and intellectual property release while permitting use exclusively as related to the school yearbook, sports teams, and clubs. Um, well, again, that's a, you, that was a motion? Yes. Is there, it's, not is only, there, it's not on the agenda, number second. one. Right. Make a motion. This, it's not on the agenda, number one. We voted to accept uh, this is related 52. related to the policy. We voted to accept 5230. But frankly, you said so much that I, I couldn't even vote on it because I, I don't understand the impact of all of it. And I'd like to see in advance how whatever you're proposing uh, how it affects 5230. I have no idea in the world other than what you said, and I can't follow it along. Well, that's why we have a discussion, which we a can discussion have discussion. I want to see black and white what you said and how it applies to this policy. Well, we've already adopted this policy, so I don't know how you can go to amend it or tack anything onto it. No, I'm honest. not amending the policy. I'm, a, I'm uh, moving to amend the rule associated with the policy. Yeah, um, I think that that motion would be out of order. It's it's not on our agenda to discuss. Um, we can put it on a future meeting if it's appropriate, but it wouldn't be appropriate for us to vote on uh, an item that's not on the agenda. Well, it's uh, a policy 5230 is on the agenda, and it relates directly to that. But rule 5230 is not on the agenda. Superintendent's rule. There's a difference between policy and rule. So okay, well, rule 6202 is actually in the informational section, Correct. so well, could, I, we, could we, I make my motion at that we time? We don't, we, that's we don't vote information. on informational. We don't move on information. But we can, if it's appropriate, we'll put it on an agenda for a future meeting. And he did. Okay, so I ask that we put it on the agenda for the next meeting. Well, look at, I have to look at chair. Yeah, I have to look at that. Okay. All right. Well, uh, wait a minute. Uh, go ahead. Chairman. Yes, Mr. Collin. Uh, I hear you, but I, but I'm I'm confused. Um, I understand things have to be on the agenda, but but again, I I, I don't like uh, I don't like uh, shutting people up. I've made that abundantly clear innumerable times. You know, I have no idea what what uh, Mrs. Miller is talking about either, and so I I obviously agree with what David said, but. Um, but but um, you know, if 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 she is making a, a a point surrounding this policy and the rule that's adopted, per, superintendent's rule pursuant to it, wouldn't it be more appropriate to to ask the policy review committee first to to look at it and then and then come back to us? Because I mean, I, I mean, be I've been here for five years and I I don't have any idea how we do this procedurally, but I don't want to just. Uh, summarily you know uh, and you're not doing so, that you're saying we'll talk about it later maybe but I'm saying we need to talk about it for sure sometime in some way that's all well then I then I will ask our policy review committee to look at the rule how it affects the policy and advise us uh, sure what, absolutely uh, but we, we also but, take note that I'm sorry, go ahead. But, but we don't dictate rule right. and I need to make that abundantly right. clear that's why I didn't volunteer PRC but certainly PRC can look at the rule but we right. don't dictate the rule okay thank you and you maybe you can go back and tell us you know at least how do you see it consistent with the policy or something like that absolutely that would right. be good thank you all right our next item is uh, personnel matters and for that I'll ask dr. Mayo to come forward Chairman McDaniels, Dr. Good Nance, evening. members of the board. I'd like board consent for the following personnel matters, retirements, and resignations. Thank you, Dr. Mayo. Uh, do I have a motion to approve exhibits H1 and H2? So moved. Second. Second. All right. Any discussion? All right. All in favor, uh, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. Our next item is administrative appointments, and I'll call on Dr. Dance. Thank you, Chairman McDaniels, members of the board. I would like to bring forward for your approval the following administrative appointments. Assistant Principal at Dundalk High School, Assistant Principal Golden Ring Middle School, 
Assistant Principal Whitlawn High School, Community Superintendent, Executive Director, Office of School Safety and Security, and Manager of the Enterprise Resource Planning System Development and Administration, which is our HR and financial planning system. Thank you, Dr. Dance. Do I have a motion to approve the administrative appointments as presented in Exhibit I? So moved. There's a second? Second. All in favor, any discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, the motion carries. Dr. Dance. Thank, thank you, Mr. Chair, member of the board. would like to introduce uh, several individuals who are being promoted, but also one individual who's new to our team. First is for the assistant principal position at Dundalk High School, and I saw Ms. Christianelli here uh, tonight with him. Currently right now a resource teacher at Dundalk High School, that's Mr. Andrew Deming. <laughs> Mr. Deming, I know uh, you have Ms. Anelli here with you, but do you have any other family and friends here with you tonight? Okay, congratulations <laughs> on your promotion. Next is for the assistant principal position at Whitlawn High School and currently right now an assistant principal in Anne Arundel County uh, Public Schools. That's James Lewis Gordon. <laughs> Mr. Gordon, welcome to the team. Do you have any family or friends here with you tonight? No, sir. Congratulations. Uh, welcome to the team. Next is for the uh, assistant principal position at Golden Ring Middle School. Currently right now a social studies teacher at Golden Ring Middle School. That's Terrence Robinson. Terrence, I know you have several family um, here with you tonight. Um, so can you mind introducing them to us? Yes, this is my mom, Sophie Oliver. Grace, former teacher at Elm Baltimore City Public School, and she's in Baltimore County as well. This is my wife, Sophie Oliver, from Indianapolis, Indiana. Currently living in Indiana. This is my new born. This is my junior, Terrence Robinson. <laughs> hey, Terrence, who I thought was four. <laughs> Terrence, congratulations again on your promotion um, and a beautiful family. Next is for the manager of the Enterprise Resource Planning System, again, which is an important system, which is our financial and HR system. Currently right now, a team leader for Business Systems Administration. That's Lawrence Rowland. <laughs> and Larry, other than Ms. Burnop, do you have any other family and friends with you tonight? Leah and Barbara, congratulations <laughs> to you two as well. Congratulations again, Larry. <laughs> Next is for the Executive Director of School Safety and Security. Right now, the Acting Executive Director for that office is April Lewis. <laughs> You've been doing this job for quite some time now, so congratulations <laughs> uh, to you. You have any family and friends here with you other than myself and Mr. Smith? <laughs> Congratulations. And last for the position of community superintendent, currently right now a senior executive director for curriculum and instruction, Mr. George Roberts. <laughs> George, do you have any family or friends here other than all of us tonight with you? It's spring concert night, so no. Congratulations, George. And Mr. Chairman and members of the board, um, I would like to also um, introduce, and the board was very um, uh, up front with me when we decided to uh, redo our school office structure. They wanted to make sure we had an office that was really based on school support. Um, and currently right now, um, we do have two assistant superintendents who are transferring over to the role of community superintendents. So if I could ask Dr. Penelope Martin-Knox and Ms. Karen Bland, if you could please stand to be recognized. <laughs> We are currently still um, advertising and interviewing for our fourth community superintendent, but I'm really looking forward to working with Dr. Martin Knox, Ms. Planner, and Mr. Roberts as three of our four community superintendents. Congratulations to the three of you. Thank you, Dr. Dance. <laughs> and Ms. Decker, for the record, I just wanted to note Mrs. Causey abstained from the last vote. Thank you. All right, our next uh, agenda item is action taken in closed session, and for that I'll call Mr. Nussbaum forward. Good evening. Uh, Good evening. Earlier this evening, the board considered an appeal regarding a confidential student matter in your uh, quasi-judicial capacity. The matter was considered on the record because there was no request for oral argument made. At this time, it would be appropriate to confirm the action taken by the board in closed session in that matter, which was hearing examiner number 16-37.
Thank you, Mr. Nussbaum. Do I have a motion to approve action taken in closed session? So moved. moved. Is there a second? Second. <laughs> Any discussion at this time? If not, uh, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? <clears throat> Any abstentions? The motion carries. Thank you, and the order's on the table. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Nussbaum. All right, our next agenda item is contract awards, and for that, I'll turn it over to Mr. Collins. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Members of the board, uh, the board's building and contracts committee met earlier this evening. There were only two members there uh, because Mr. Stewart and uh, Mr. Gillis were not able to attend this evening. Mrs. Causey and myself were there, and I want to thank uh, Kathleen particularly for bringing forward many uh, thought-provoking and very precise questions and to thank George and Pete for preparing answers and moving the meeting along very satisfactorily so that uh, Mrs. Causey and I were, were satisfied that items K1 through tr K14 should be forwarded to the full board for approval and I'm doing that at this time, Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much. And um, I'll also compliment Ms. Causey for the uh, questions that she submits and gives the panel time to answer them, and uh, it does help us make better decisions. Do you have a I question just want, point? Mr. Chair, I'd just like to separate out uh, contract MWE 813-14, uh, item K5. K5. All right. What's the title of it? All right, then I'll ask for a motion to, um, to accept items K1 through K4 and K6 through K14. So moved. All right, any dis yeah. We don't need a second. We don't need a second. Any discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion carries. All right, and now we'll discuss, uh, I'm going to ask for a motion to accept uh, item K5 and then we'll discuss that. So moved. Is there a, okay, we don't need a second mm -hmm. discussion, go ahead. Um, yes, as I, as I have um, questioned other contracts similarly, um, I questioned the contract during the meeting as to the length and also to the terms. So I would just suggest to my fellow board members that we amend the contract to be more consistent with our other contracts, which are five years, and to prorate the uh, modification amount accordingly. Second. Was that a motion? Yeah, that was. Yes. A... Mr. Right. Chairman, um, we didn't we didn't exactly discuss that in in contracts committee, but uh, I would like to hear uh, obviously hear from uh, George on that. I would be inclined to suggest that we not do that. However, I'd like to hear George's reaction, and perhaps we will. I'm sorry. Before we get Kathleen, can I hear your? rationale behind why? Well, item K-5, the uh, previous estimated contract spending authority was $475,000, and to date we have um, spent $260,000. So it, it's really quite a jump up in dollar value um, and also in the length of the contract. So I just, in, in, as a general principle, I don't think it's appropriate to, to um, restrict the, the school system to that length of time, especially when this board in 2018 is going to be drastically different after, perhaps, after the um, elections. So to, you know, to, to have the school system restricted to this contract for that length of time, I don't think is, is appropriate. Okay. And um, Mr. Saris or Mr. Dixit, could you comment on the effect of changing the period that the contract is um, um, <clears throat> the the amount the purchasing authority was based on the expansion of the regular expansion of the program to all schools um, we obviously uh, do not uh, know what future funding will be getting for the program um, it's been rolled out very modestly over three years, and uh, we have spent, as Ms. Causey says, the 260000 to date. So many software licenses are approved for 10, 15, and sometimes open-ended periods. For instance, our current 
mainframe HR and financial package uh, software was acquired in 1999. And when you make a multi, you know, significant investment, uh, you don't anticipate completely leaving that platform and moving to something else. So there's certainly nothing uh, that would, no, no reason not to do it. Uh, you know, uh, the program is only, uh, like anything else, funded on a year-to-year -year basis so that if we don't have the funding, we don't do the program. Um, I don't think that approving a 10-year or 13-year or 5-year contract really has any strategic bearing on practically, you know, how this is implemented. Okay. Ms. Williams? Yes. Um, how was this uh, procurement solicited? In other words, um, what, was it the understanding of those who um, decided to offer their services that this would be for yeah. eight and a half years or? Right. This is a curriculum, and we asked for pr proposals from a number of vendors, and it was selected by the Division of Curriculum and Instruction as best meeting their needs. So it was not a low bid type of contract. No, I'm really speaking in terms of the length and the duration just so that there would not be any kind of protest if, in fact, um, those submitting their proposals thought it was with the understanding of, you know, the extended time, assuming there was funding. I mean, obviously, every vendor understands if it's not funded every year. Right, then they and that language is in the contract, the appropriation language. Hmm. Um, Ms. Johnson. Well, I think it's important that if, um, you know, the world languages is something um, that the county is going to move forward with as one of their uh, initiatives that we maintain this contract, we, we move forward with this contract because after 2018, no matter what the school system looks like, no matter what the board looks like, important to the county as a whole. So I, if I say that we vote for the contract. Mr. Birch. Gentlemen, do you have any indication that any country in the world will be changing its current use of language over the period of this contract? <laughs> no. <laughs> Thank you very much, gentlemen. You're welcome. Yeah. I, um, I had a que question for Ms. Kazi. Um, if we do have the right to end the contract without penalty, uh, can you help me understand the disadvantage of extending the term if, if we can just stop it in year six or year seven or? Well, it's one of those things where if it's in motion, it tends to stay in motion. But if it's a contract that has a date and then it would need to be renewed, then it will come through purchasing through the regular processes. The other thing is that technology, typically the prices decrease over time. But if you're locked into a contract at a higher price, and there's not a specific date certain where it should get put, pulled forward to be reevaluated, then the system will not realize those cost savings. So for those reasons, I would say a shorter term contract would be appropriate. All right. Ms. Miller? Yes, for me um, also it is uh, a matter of accountability. Um, we have a tendency as a school system to jump feet first in and kind of overcommit ourselves prematurely. Um, so this, and, and I guess I ought to just state what the change is here. It goes from 475,000 to over $7 million, which is, is huge, and, and it's a big commitment. Um, can, um, Mr. Saris, can you explain to me, it looks to me, if I'm reading this right, that the original term was eight years, is that right? Uh, the and original, then, correct. Um, and so the value is based on at fully expand at the fully expanded mm -hmm. limit of about 550,000 a year is, is how we get to this large number. Now, there's no telling how long it's going to take us to obtain the funding to <coughs> go from 40 schools to 110 schools. So no. we, pr we pr made this projection based on the most conservative or largest possible number. In the statements that 
if we run out of funding, you said, then we can, we can end, you know, it's year by year. The contract can be uh, terminated with 30 days notice. But that's only if we we're running out. It's only because of funding issues. No, it can be terminated for convenience as well. There's a non-appropriation clause as well as a termination for convenience within 30 days. Okay, thank you. All right. Any other discussion? Um, if not, uh, we are we're going to vote on Mrs. Causey's amendment to change the term <coughs> from um, eight years to five years. Is that what? The motion said? Well, currently it's um, 13 years, taking it back to five. 13 back to five, okay. All right, all in favor of that motion, please raise your hand. Those opposed? Okay, the motion does not carry. So I will ask if um, there's a motion to accept K5 as written. Or as presented. We already had a motion, I think. Okay. But I'll right. make it again. again. All right. Um, is there, we don't need a second? No. All right. All in favor, please raise your hand. Okay. And those opposed? All right. Any abstentions? Okay. The motion carries. All right. Thank you, Mr. Collins. You're welcome, Mr. Chairman. All right, our next item is our report on policies, and I'll turn that back to Ms. Williams. Good evening again. Um, presented as first readers are uh, policies number, policy number 1270 and policy number 4005. It's being asked that it be moved to second reader. All right. Do I have a motion to adopt the recommendation of the Board's <coughs> Policy Review Committee? So moved. There is oh, no second? Second. Any discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion carries. Thank you, Ms. Williams. All right, our next um, <coughs> agenda item is uh, actually board member comments. And uh, with that, I'll ask uh, Mr. Birch, are you ready over there and for some comment? You can bet I'm ready, although I, I, my, my, my recollection was you went to Mr. Stewart last time, but he wasn't ready, so he came to me, but I'm okay with that. That's right. That's I do right. note that when we had our parliamentary procedure, that it was recommended that uh, the chair not always keep calling on the same people uh, in an effort to demonstrate uh, his or her fairness. Just a couple of comments. I went to the uh, Ties and Pearls event that um, the student and staff at Shady Spring Elementary School put on. Uh, with uh, some of their uh, school partners, including Martin's Eastwind. It was a great event. Um, you know, young people move between a lot of different environments, the informal environment, the informal environment, and um, these students um, learn to make that seamless uh, transition. Um, politeness, etiquette, um, public speaking, um, dressing for success. All of these things that you see in these fourth and fifth graders, and you say to yourself, what a really neat thing to do. The kids are, are really enjoying themselves. Their parents couldn't be prouder. I was glad to be there. And it was an officially uh, billed as a high T. Um, I'll leave it at that. Um, also want to make mention, uh, notwithstanding the, the obvious dangers of overstating the MAP test data, um, there is good news to report about uh, our Hawthorne Elementary School students uh, there um, significantly have grown in their scores uh, over the past two years. Hats off to the students and to the staff and to the most excellent principal, Yvonne Barheit, uh, um, for uh, the good news there. I want to thank, uh, on a related Hawthorne note, I want to thank our board members for their vote on one of the contracts tonight. It will go a long way to uh, addressing uh, a transportation safety matter, parking matter at the school. And as a um, school safety, uh, when I was 11 and 12, I had that post. Mm. Uh, and in fact, had to stop an assistant superintendent, who later became superintendent, I had to stop him and his Volvo because there were kids in the crosswalk. Yeah. And uh, that uh, matter will be remedied. The superintendent has advised me tonight that it may be remedied in advance of school starting. 
and I'm pleased to report that uh, that school will also be um, much cooler than it was on uh, the first day of classes in August of last year. Uh, finally, I wanted to note that this guy will be attending a number of graduations uh, in our school system, uh, six of them from Overly to Kenwood to uh, Perry Hall to Parkville to Eastern and Chesapeake. Uh, he will be traveling incognito as a mustached distinguished member of the Baltimore County Board of Education. If you see him, don't give away his identity. Just kind of nod and he'll nod back. Mr. Chairman, I will pass this along to my members to see this <laughs> young gentleman who did not attend a tie and, uh, and pearls event, but was taught about being a gentleman by his parents. Oh. There you go, Ms. Miller. I love it, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> all right, thank you, Mr. Virch. Uh, Ms. Miller? I want to thank all of the many stakeholders who have uh, supported immediate air conditioning relief for our students and teachers. <clears throat> Um, your involvement has been the catalyst, along with the Board of Public Works, in getting the promise of an accelerated implementation schedule for central air from the county executive. We still have a few goals to achieve, an effective heat closure policy by August, and portable AC <laughs> units in those classrooms still needing relief. And my, my I've just lost my my place here. Um, you've proven that advocacy works, so keep it up. Uh, secondly, Ed Gillis and I will be attending our first meeting with the central office to address issues around safety and technology on June 30th. Uh, while I'm excited to have this critical effort move forward, I am disappointed in the fact that it took four months for the first meeting to occur and also that the meeting will be only bi-monthly. That's once every two months and uh, limited to one hour or at least scheduled for one hour in duration. That means this committee is allotting only six hours <coughs> per year to address these critical issues through the committee. I remain optimistic and I look forward to keeping the board and the public informed on our progress. Thank you, Ms. Miller. Ms. Johnson? Um, I also want to thank the county executive, the county council, the superintendent, um, and all the stakeholders who had a part in accelerating the air condition, um, the AC relief here throughout the county. Um, I wanted to um, disagree with Ms. Miller and Ms. Causey's points or objections about uh, the contract and the the um, way in which we came about the contract, the discussions, the closed door behind, you know, out in public discussions. I think it was a not a smooth as smooth as some would like process. But um, with that all said and done, we all have had plenty of opportunity to discuss um, individually and as a board. Um, I also wanted to, and I might need Ms. White's help on this, at the last curriculum committee, um, they discussed a STEAM project or a STEAM uh, magnet at Cromwell Valley and an additional elementary school. And it was really interesting. And at the next um, curriculum committee update, I will give, I will give some more information. Arts. Yep, Who's so we're arts? adding arts to the, to the STEM. I thought you mispronounced something. No. <laughs> <laughs> and um, one of the components of that is coding. And I thought that was really interesting and really great to incorporate that in some of our elementary schools. Thank you. Johnson, Mr. Collins. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, a couple of quick comments. Um, in 1974 at Kenwood High School, I was uh, the class sponsor of the senior class where that mysterious picture of that mysterious person uh, took place. I just want to point that, point that tidbit of information out for Mrs. Eaton. I know she looks excited to hear <laughs> that news. <laughs> <laughs> You're not supposed to laugh at your own jokes, Mrs. Eden, but I couldn't contain myself. <clears throat> the Sun paper uh, a week or so ago had a very good editorial um, talking about air conditioning in Baltimore County. And they talked about all of the players from the, the they talked about Governor Hogan, they talked about Comptroller Francho, they talked about the county executive, County Executive Kamenetz, 
the Baltimore County Council, Superintendent Dance, and I would add in the legislative leaders and everyone and, and uh, everyone involved, and it was time for all of them to declare victory and to uh, all of them take a bow and just get on with the business of getting the job done. And I think uh, I want to add my voice to that and congratulate everyone that had any part in encouragement or advocacy or funding or anything that occurred along the way because we have come so far and we now know that we are going to have in the next couple of years all of our schools air conditioned, central air, and everything is going to be fine. And Victory has a thousand friends and everyone involved from Governor Hogan to the county executive and everyone in between can all take a bow and all take credit. So let's give all of them credit and let's get on with the job of getting it done finally. And, and um, I want to observe that this meeting is going to end before the first inning of the Oriole game starts if I stop talking. Uh, thank you. Ms. Waya? Yes, I just want to um, go piggyback off of what everybody else has said about air conditioning. Thank you to everyone who's advocated for it. Um, I know you both have been to board of BTW meetings, so if, um, and, and everyone at uh, Comptroller Hogan, I mean, sorry, Comptroller French Ho and Governor Hogan, um, who've been extreme advocates, and I've had personal conversations with Comptroller uh, French Ho, so he's been a really huge advocate. Thank you, Comptroller. Thank you to the students who went and talked at BPW. Thank you to the teachers and our parent advocates, everyone who's, uh, Dr. Dance, all of our county executives, and county executive and county council. They've been a huge advocate to, for all of our schools to be air conditioned in the near future. So I'm really excited to see that, and I hope everything goes well. I mean, even though I won't be here, but my school my school will be getting air conditioning in the next two years, so I'm, I'm, I'm very happy about that. So thank you, and yeah, we're going to move on. Oh, so last thing, thank you to the board members who attended Bull Roast on uh, last week, and thank you, Dr. Dance, for attending, as well as congratulations to Mr. Michael Dickerson for winning BCSE Friend of BCSE yeah. Award. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but, and thank you for being such a huge supporter of student leadership, so thank you. Thank you, Ms. Wyatt. Thank, thank you. Um, I wanted to proudly say that I supported the vote for the superintendent's contract. Um, I disagree with everything that Ms. Miller said. I find no credibility in any of it. Uh, having said that, I, I wanted to say that there's always something that's overlooked when we, de when we discuss and determine the value of an individual. And that's the intrinsic values that that person brings. Uh, not only to our school system, but to our county. As many of you remember, when base relocation took place uh, in New Jersey, we had many, many, many families who were relocated to Maryland come to the administration building to inquire about our school system, our schools. And that happens to be the determining factor where people, why people locate in Baltimore County, aside from employment. So I'm very proud to say that I think our superintendent has publicly shown exactly what we have, a vibrant school system, and one that we can be very proud of. And I, I really thank him for his participation in all his public appearances, because that shows great value of our system and where we're going. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Yolfowler. Ms. Kazi? Good evening. I will keep this short. I did uh, want to second, third, and fourth what everyone has said about uh, the uh, improvements in the time frame to get the schools and the teachers and the students relief from heat and also uh, to avoid economic um, setbacks if we end up having to close schools because of heat. Um, I do want to say that uh, one person that has not been mentioned is Treasurer Nancy Kopp, who has also been concerned about the air conditioning issue when I've uh, been in attendance at the Board of Public Works meetings. Um, also, I want to say that although it's been fantastic that the response um, and the focus um, towards our facilities has increased due to pressure, due to parents' pressure, advocates' pressure, due to the county council, due to um, the superintendent, due to the board members, due to the county executive responding to all of that. But it really should not come down to public pressure. What it should come down to is the Board of Education proactively doing our job. 
Uh, and to that end, I would say that the Board of Education should explore, uh, at maybe after July, a real 10-year facilities plan that will be able to analyze all of the needs of the community because there are more than just air conditioning. We still have the water problems and we have overcrowding and so forth. And they should be um, all addressed in a systemic way where it's not just which uh, community has the greatest advocates involved or that we get into this big wrangle on a state level and so forth in order to get the focus where it needs to be. So I would encourage my fellow board members uh, to put that on the agenda, put that in our minds um, to address in this coming year. Um, I also wanna say that um, Policy Review Committee meeting on Monday, May 17th. I think we got a lot of really good work done and I wanna um, congratulate my, my committee chair, Romain Williams and um, Ms. Johnson and Mr. Virch. Um, so we're excited about bringing forward a heat closure policy at the next meeting uh, for the community to hear and respond to. Um, I am also looking forward to graduations. Um, it's gonna be wonderful to be spending time celebrating the many accomplishments of our students and also celebrating the hard work and encouragement <coughs> of each person in the system that got them to that graduation stage. And that includes the teachers and the bus drivers, the cafeteria workers, the support staff, and the administration, and Dr. Dance, and the members of the board here that do work hard um, in trying to get our arms around all of the functioning of the system and to make the best decisions that we can. So I'm really looking forward to that, and I thank you all. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Ms. Carter. Thank you. I just want to commend Nick and Deetcha for the outstanding job um, they did in uh, having the closing activity. It was really well attended. The students were so excited and so proud. And um, really, really, really proud of you, Deetcha um, and, and Nick, although he's not here tonight. Um, I also want to, is Nick here? Where? He he's snuck in. He's on. <laughs> Oh, 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 Nick Burton Prater. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry, Nick Burton Prater. They're not our Nick. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, sorry. Our Nick's stuck in, too. Yeah. Um, to the extent that the board does not have independent funding, I think that the board did all that it could do in terms of air conditioning, um, including when it asked for the additional money to be put in the budget. Um, I'm just thankful um, for all of the input from everybody who made it possible for our schools and for our kids and for our teachers and um, the rest of the administration that our schools um, are on target, hopefully to have the um, all schools air conditioned in 2017. So I'm just really excited about that. I'm very appreciative of our um, county executive uh, and the leadership that he has shown in not doing a piecemeal uh, job with um, the whole air conditioning issue. I, I want to thank our superintendent um, for his courage and um, just for the manner and how he handled himself uh, before the um, BPW uh, meeting. And I also want to thank um, all of the legislators who helped make it possible, as well as the um, BPW um, members for whatever input um, they had and, and also bringing this to fruition. Uh, I also want to say that I'm very proud of the decision that was made by this board to um, award the contract to the superintendent tonight. I believe that the superintendent has done an outstanding job. I'm not aware of any proven information that he has done anything inappropriate. And um, I think this county is so much better off for having uh, Dr. Dallas Dance as the superintendent of our schools. I'm also looking forward to the um, several graduations. I'm excited. I always get excited to see so many kids. They're excited, and um, I'm, I know it's going to be a wonderful day for all of our students. And I think that's it. Thank you, Ms. Williams. Ms. Eaton? Yes, I don't like to repeat what other board members said. But I would like to thank Dr. Dance and Kevin Cabinets and all those that were involved in getting our school's central air conditioned. And Saturday morning, I watched It's Academic, and I would like to congratulate Catonsville High School for winning. All right. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Stewart. Catonsville. Okay. 
I wanted to say uh, a few things. Well, first, I thought we'd have maybe three more hours tonight, so. <laughs> <laughs> I am disappointed, as I know all of you are. Um, first inning's almost over, Nick. All right. <laughs> Coming from you. Uh, oh! That was a kid. <laughs> One for Nick. <laughs> <laughs> On the subject of air conditioning, I, I know we've called out a lot of people, but I did want to thank uh, Dr. Dance and his team, uh, Kevin Smith, uh, George, Pete. I mean, I know you guys spent a tremendous amount of time uh, making it happen and working behind the scenes, and uh, I hope you know that it, it, it goes noticed, not unnoticed, um, and uh, particularly by this board. And although I'm certainly open to a longer term analysis and study of facilities, I, I do want to thank stakeholders for raising passionate concerns. And stakeholder input, even if it's very active input, is necessary in this process. You know, we have to build a consensus. And um, this should only encourage additional input. It shouldn't discourage it. And it should only, should only encourage this board that we can do big things with the community, not that we're falling down on our job. Um, and finally, I do want to say that although We've been able to make some good steps here with a uh, superintendent's contract with air conditioning as we press forward. We do need to remember that on air conditioning, it's not over completely, right? So we have to still have a well-crafted policy. We have to ensure that our water supplies and other essential uh, needs are met in this interim period. We have to be very sensitive that a 100-degree classroom and 90-degree classroom, even for a day, um, is a very significant challenge and burden uh, for teachers, kids, parents, everyone alike. Uh, and finally, I look forward to graduation as well. Uh, my bow tie will not be as big as this one, uh, but hopefully I can still make a statement, right? <laughs> right, Steve, thanks. Thank you, Mr. Stewart. And um, as we wrap up, I did want to mention that I had the privilege of attending the Maryland State Board of Education meeting uh, earlier today where our Baltimore County Teacher of the Year, Corey Carter, was honored, uh, along with Mrs. White. Uh, and some others and uh, we want to extend congratulations to him and also mention that the State Board of Agenda uh, Board of Education agenda had some interesting uh, items on there about English language learners which uh, are you know um, a significant part of our changing demographics in the state of Maryland and something that uh, all of our boards of education need to keep in front of us along with uh, teacher and principal evaluations those were two items that I think are going to be very uh, timely for us to stay abreast of as as things move forward um, with that, I just would note the information items that have come out with the meeting uh, information tonight. Uh, revised Superintendent's Rule 5230, uh, 6202. Uh, a financial report uh, ending March 2015 and 2016. And a 2016 legislative session final summary. Um, as far as announcements, again, just to repeat, we have a hearing, public hearing tomorrow here at Greenwood that begins at 7 p.m. on the FY 2018 capital uh, project. And uh, anyone wishing to speak, uh, the sign-up sheets will be out starting at 6 p.m. And again, the hearing will take place uh, here in room 114. Uh, and if there are no other... Oh, right, okay. Yes, yeah, school and offices will be closed on Memorial Day, uh, May 30th. Hopefully it won't rain all day. And uh, our next board meeting is Tuesday, June 14th here at 7 p.m. So uh, again, uh, please sign the orders over at the table. And uh, if nothing further, our meeting is adjourned.